Mosiah Christ bless you. Uh, my name is Kai Yo, the organization stand before you, Israel United in Christ. Let me ask you, what's your name? Shalon? Shalon, Shalon. Do you believe in the Bible? Yes, sir. I, 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 when it comes to the Bible, I focus more on the Old Testament. Okay, do you believe in the New Testament at all? You believe it's heresy? You believe it's falsehood? I, I believe that that the new do you believe the New Testament was created to draw the people away? Okay. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to speak um, get, uh, First Peter chapter 2, 21, I think. About the example that Christ loved. Right. Okay, I understand. So you you believe that there's a contradiction between the New Testament and the Old Testament. But you believe what Moses said, you believe the commandments are good. Right? You believe you believe the commandments are good, but you believe that the New Testament does not teach to keep those same commandments. Therefore, you don't believe in the New Testament. All right? All right, so we believe in Jesus the Christ, just so you know where we are. All right? We believe that Jesus the Christ was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right? You, in, in order for me to learn the history of the Israelites in the tribe of Judah, where would I need to go? In the Bible, where would I need to go? Okay, I got you. Are we going to bring it out for you? We're going to bring it out for you. All praises to the most high, bro. You be patient with us. We're going to try to deal with you, answer your questions. Hopefully, some other people out here will get edified. Some other people out here will come ask any questions they have as it relates to the Bible. All right, read what you got. This is the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For even here on two were ye called, because Christ also suffered for what, what did Christ do? Also suffered for us. Christ suffered for us. How? He died on the cross for our sins. Right? Christ suffered for us. He did not give it to his temptations. Right? He said not. He did not break any of the commandments you find that Moses gave. Right? So Christ was found righteous because he kept and fulfilled the Old Testament. He kept and fulfilled everything that you believe in. That's what Christ did. Right? That's what makes him so great. Right? You know? Leaving us an example the, that ye should follow his steps. So Christ left us an example. Right? What's an example? Something that you do as a as like a message to let people do it the way If you if you see a good example, should you follow that? I mean, you ain't gonna know no good example right off the rip, you know what I'm saying? It's something that you have to study and think about this and think about. You won't know a good example off top, right? That's what you said. All right, hold on, hold on, hold that thought. Hold where you are and get uh, Romans chapter seven. Because this is how we know what's good and what's evil. All right, we measure everything up to the Bible. All right, read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Hold on. It's a scripture in Deuteronomy about good. It's, I think it's like Deuteronomy 4. Can somebody find that for me? Read what you got. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. And what? And good. So what's good according to the Bible? The laws. The laws that you find where? In the Old Testament. In the Old Testament. Those, so the, the New Testament is doing what? It's confirming the words that are in the Old Testament. It's just reiterating the things that you find in the Old Testament. Okay? You with me? Alright, so go back to where we were in Peter's. Read what you got. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps so Christ left us a good example otherwise would the Bible be saying follow his steps 
No, it wouldn't. So we know that example was good. According to the Bible, what's good? Keeping God's laws. You got a mighty bear, right? Why do you have a mighty bear? Is it because you keep keeping God's commandments or is it because you like to stop? So you know it's a commandment that a man should not shave off his beard. You understand that, right? All praises to the Most High. Um, where you at? First Peter's? All right, get the law in Deuteronomy about the beard. That's it. That's it. Get uh, Leviticus. Twenty. Yep, yep. Get that one. No, get the one in uh, yep twenty-one. Yep. Read that. Read. This is Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So the Bible says that they should not shave off their beards. So you, you keeping that law today, right? You're not shaving off your beards. Right. You're not, you're not perfect, right? But it looks like you've taken steps to pursue perfection. And that's the same thing that these brothers are doing out here right now, right? But that, that right there is a good law. You're setting a good example by not shaving off your beard, right? Christ did the same exact thing. Christ had a beard, right? You may not have known that because you don't believe in Christ. But we're going to show you that Christ kept this good commandment. Right, we're going to show you that. Uh, from there, get uh, Isaiah, what is it, 50? It's a prophecy about Christ in the Old Testament. We're going to show you that Christ had a beard just like you. Read. Right, the book of Isaiah, chapter 50 and verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. The, 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 when, when Christ was was uh, was was arrested, right? When you read it, have you read that before? You haven't read that before? Okay, so in the New Testament, when you read the Gospels about Christ, on his way on uh, to die for the sins of this nation, right? The nation of Israel, he was arrested and they ripped his beard off. Right? Christ had a beard because he was keeping the law we just read. That's a good commandment. That's a good commandment that he was keeping. We read in the Old Testament, you got Deuteronomy 10. Get Deuteronomy chapter 10, you said it's verse 3? 13. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 13, it tells you that God's commandments is good. So you don't believe in the in the New Testament, but it says the same thing. Right. We, I, I just want to par I want to parallel. No, what I'm saying is you don't believe in the New Testament, but you believe in the Old Testament. Is that true or is that false? Okay, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm showing you now is the same thing we read in the New Testament. The, the same thing, I don't know, that's a good question. The same thing we read in the New Testament, we read now in the Old Testament. Listen, read. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 10 and verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy what? For thy good. So what's good according to the Old Testament? The commandments, the same thing that's good according to the New Testament. The same exact thing, right? Christ did these things, right? First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. It's verse 6 or 7 where it talks about walking as he did. Verse 6. Read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him or himself also, also so to walk, even as he walked. All right, so we, we walk as Christ walked. Because Christ kept all the commandments you find in the Old Testament. Right. Christ did not eat pork. We don't eat pork. Right? But show me a scripture that says eat pork. No, it says all things. Well, read chapter 4, uh, the scripture that he's talking about. All right, gotcha. Read it. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 4. For every creature of God is good. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, like, yeah. Every creature of God is good if what? Read. And nothing to be refused 
if it be received with thanksgiving. And what? Verse 5. For it is sanctified. It's what? Sanctified. It's what? Sanctified. What's it mean to sanctify something? If I if something is sanctified, is it holy? Right? If it's sanctified, it's holy, right? No question. Right, so food is sanctified where in the Bible? You know what I want? I want the, the end. Alright? I think it's 11 and like, yeah. For one, we gotta go back to the book that you believe in. Right? We gotta go back to the book that you believe in. So everything that we say, we gonna try to show you out of this Bible. And that's what you should believe. All we doing is guiding you through the book that you believe in. All right, read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 44. You know, for Hold on, the book of Leviticus, where, that's in the Old Testament, right? All right, you would believe this, right? Read. Verse 44, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify. Ye shall what? Sanctify yourselves. How do we do that? Read. And ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves. With what? Come on. With any manner of creeping thing. With what? Any manner of creeping thing. Come on. That creepeth upon the earth. So if I eat a spider, right, that's unholy, that has not been sanctified by the word of God, we just read in the Old Testament of Leviticus. Am I holy? If I do not, if I do not eat that, I'm holy. I'm keeping those. I'm, I'm eating. I'm not. I'm, I'm keeping myself away. I'm abstaining from the things that make me unclean. Right. So if I don't eat pork, swan, right? Am I making steps to be holy? Right, the food is being sanctified by what? It has already been sanctified by God. Read. Verse 47. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So there's a difference between unclean and clean. It's a difference between something that is sanctified as clean and something that's unsanctified. Right? There's a difference between the holy and the unholy. The clean and the unclean. But where are we reading this at? In the Bible. Right? Was that it? Come on. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So there's a difference between the beast like a pig that you can't eat. Nowhere in the Bible does it say eat a pig. What we just read was eat the things that have been sanctified by the Bible. It hasn't been, it's not one of them. Go back to where we were. Read. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Right, so the food that has been sanctified by the word of God is what? What things can you eat that's clean? Fish with scales, from what I understand. Fish with scales. Where do you read that at? That, that's in Leviticus 2, ain't it? The fish without scales. It's in, it's in the that. same chapter, bro. It's in the same chapter. Right. right? So those things you can't eat. True. You can eat fish what as I long mean? as it has skins and, and, and uh, fins and scales. That's what I do. I try to you, you can't eat swine, though. Why? Because it's unclean. It's unclean. So when you read in the New Testament, there's no contradiction there between that, right? There's no contradiction there, all right? Um, from there, Matthew chapter 19, verse five. So I shouldn't take the all things are good for No. Precept upon precept. Get that, get Isaiah, and then Matthew chapter 19, all right? So no, what you gotta do is, when you read something that says, Oh, all things is good. You got to ask yourself, well, what's good? Is, is good something that I learned in America, in this culture, in this, in this, uh, at this, did I learn what good was 
by coming out to this festival? Or did I learn what good was by asking Google? Or did I learn what good, what good was by looking, hold on, did I learn what good was by reading the Bible? We showed you what good was according to the Bible. You're not gonna go on Webster's Dictionary and read that good is keeping God's commandments. Right, so in order to know what good is, you gotta read this Bible. Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.